Back in March, I went to London for a design course, which got cancelled. <laughs> but I decided to seize the opportunity and go anyway. This video is a tiny summary of what happened on that trip. Hi everyone, it's Justine and I'm in London, which you can probably tell by this little door. It's not mine, but it's close to where I'm staying in Notting Hill. Normally when I come to London, I don't have time to do anything because everything is so paced and so rushed. So this time I'm staying a whole week and I have a plan. I want to get up early in the mornings. Thank God for the time difference. London is an hour ahead of Berlin, that helps. And then I want to keep the afternoons free for me to go and explore the city, to go and see the Amy Winehouse exhibition at the Design Museum, to go to the Whitechapel Gallery. I have a bit of free time that I still need to plan, but I have some things on my checklist that I absolutely want to see. So we'll see how that goes. I decided to visit an auction house. There are several next to Soho. I picked Sotheby's because they happen to be doing an auction of women artists, including works by Leonor Fini, whom I'm quite fond of. Auction houses are intimidating, yes, but they're a bit like free museums. You can just walk in, enjoy the presentations of all the artworks that are going to go on sale soon, and then you just walk out. I went mainly to see a screen with eight printed panels by Leonor Fini titled Metamorphosis of a Woman. It's estimated to be worth between 15 and 20 thousand pounds, <laughs> but you know, having a look doesn't cost anything. The sale also includes copies of works by Fini and the one you see at the top here, which is a cute lady sewing something. That one had a very low reserve price, so I thought, Maybe no one else is going to want it. Maybe I get lucky and I just found a bargain. So I placed a very low bid on that one. The sale also includes a table by Marina Abramovich, a performance artist with bizarre objects on it, like a gun, bread, a bow, knives, and a prompt. There are 72 objects on the table that one can use on me as desired. So she's telling the audience they can do whatever they want with her, to her, including feeding her or even hurting her. Pretty wild. I understand the concept, but I personally wouldn't pay for this kind of daily object. You are here. I'm going here. This is my view right now. The tree above me is blooming like wild, <laughs> really cool. And I'm going to the Serpentine Gallery in a minute, which is here. Plus they have exhibition spaces outside too. That just went really wrong. <laughs> Turns out the Serpentine Gallery, both buildings are closed right now because they are installing the next exhibition. So there is nothing to see. And there is also nothing in the garden. <laughs> Nope, nope. I should have checked the website before. Amateur. <laughs> However, they have one fine bookshop in there. I may or may not have made some investments. <laughs> I bought this magazine, April Issue. It's an international magazine all about art. I have the essay. Why have there been no great women artists by Linda Nocklin? It's something that she wrote at the beginning of the 70s, wondering why all the masters of the past centuries and decades up to the 70s were men. A little biography with the color photos of the art of Louise Bourgeois. She's the woman, among other things, who created those spiders. There is a spider exhibited at the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao in Spain. And then I have this. This is an experiment. I didn't know about this book. Psychoanalyst meets Marina Abramovich. Marina Abramovich is a performance artist. She works a lot with fear in her work and she's usually the object of whatever is happening in the performance. In other words, that's where you will find me this afternoon. <laughs> the day is saved. This one was just maybe 40 centimeters away from my feet. Not high. 
Hej då. Today I'm in the center of London. I was supposed to visit the London Tower, which is in the very center, but the weather is just too good. <laughs> it's the most beautiful day possible. Super lucky. So I calculated how long I need for the visit in the tower and when they close. And until that time, I'll be outside. <laughs> just keeping enough time for the visit. The fortress was built in the 11th century and is protected by ravens. If the ravens leave, London falls, or something like that. <laughs> That's how the story goes. I can highly recommend visiting the Tower of London on a weekday before the touristic season starts. Because look, <laughs> I have the place almost for myself. Amazing, amazing. Among the highlights of my visit were carved symbols on the walls of the tower, coats of arms engraved by past prisoners as a symbol of resistance. Beautiful work. A massive armor of King Henry VIII, who was uh, convinced of his manliness, as you can see, and the armor of his horse, crafted as if it was embroidery work, absolutely beautiful. Samples of the walls, linens and brocades, which were likely used for a royal bedroom in the Middle Age, and you could even touch them. And the private chapel of the castle. White stones, geometric arches, lots of daylight. A magical place. Look at this view. By the way, yesterday evening I went with a friend to one of Otolenghi's restaurants, the one in Soho, which is called Nopi. It's tapas that you take and you share with the people at your table. Glorious, amazing. The dessert was a creme brulee with miso with madeleine and brown rice and I'm embarrassed to say, being French, that the best madeleine I ever had were English. <laughs> it was yesterday night. If you want a really good night out and uh, gastronomy, a uh, really good restaurant evening in London, that's a place I would absolutely recommend. The next day I kept it light. I went to Savile Row to see the tailor's shops. It's where many British designers learn their crafts, for example, Alexander McQueen, but it's not as fancy as you'd expect. It's in fact a modern street full of very expensive suits. The fun part there is to look down and see the tailors making the suits in the underground floors below each shop. I wandered through that district, bought some sewing tools at McCulloch and Wallace, as every time I go to London, and I went home happy. If you're in Soho, do definitely stop at Liberty London. It's an apparel store, yes, but it also has a floor dedicated to fabrics and Liberty has a long tradition of developing their own prints on silk. Even if you don't go shopping there, visit just for the building itself because it's amazing. Good afternoon. Today I'm in the east side of London. I came here for two things. The first one is the former Truman Brewery, which is now a market slash food stalls slash business offices for creative businesses. So I want to check that out. And then I'm going to the Whitechapel Gallery because they have an exhibition on right now about artist spaces. So artworks that have the place where the artist works as a theme. Very much looking forward to this one. And I even checked the opening hours. <laughs> The vintage market is really, really big indeed. Um, there are so many rooms that I got lost in the middle and I had to follow the signs to find the exit. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can get real bargains in there price-wise, but I did see some Burberry coats, a nice selection, in very good condition. So if you're looking for one, go to Brick Lane, to the Truman Brewery. If you're looking for different eras of fashion like something from the 40s, something from the 60s, they even have Victorian things in, in there, um, then it's definitely the place to go because they have plenty of choice. On Brick Lane, I saw students from the photography school next door training their portrait skills, so I volunteered. They promised to send me the photos and they never did. 
The Whitechapel Gallery is one of my favorite spaces in London by far. This exhibition specifically was about the ateliers where the art is created. An atelier serves as a secret place, like for Louise Bourgeois, as a stage, like Andy Warhol's factory, as a character in the story, or sometimes your home is your canvas. I spent three hours in the exhibition and eventually got kicked out because they were closing. <laughs> I left the Whitechapel Gallery with a tip from someone. If you're interested in Louise Bourgeois, you should go see her retrospective show at the South Bank Center, they said. Okay, I said. <laughs> Louise Bourgeois is a sculptor famous for her giant spiders called Mom. Maybe you've seen that before. They're a very clear metaphor about her too present and too intrusive mother. <laughs> well, I discovered that at the end of her life, she went back to her childhood traumas and created using fabric as her medium and embroidery as her technique. She mended the clothes from her youth and paired them with her memories. She repeated patterns reminiscent of spider webs and embroidered her dreams and fears in colorful thread. A major artist presented from a whole new angle and the highlight of my week. That was quite a week. But you remember that little book that I bought about Marina Abramovich? It explains that the artwork that I saw completely by accident at Sotheby's was in fact one of her major early performances. The performance did take place, the artist was in fact standing in a room and the audience was using those objects on her without limitations, even for the objects that were frankly dangerous. The performance ended because the police intervened. The sale at Sotheby's really didn't do it justice because the stakes and the context of the performance weren't clear at all in the presentation. And so logically, the artwork sold for a quarter of its estimated value. My Little Lithography by Leonor Fini got sold too, for a price much higher than what I was willing to pay. However, I kept looking online and I found a small gallery in Switzerland which had one very old lithography of a sphinx also by Finney. I loved it, I placed a bid, I was alone, and I got it. And this color palette will look even better in the French house than the sewing lady. This kind of coincidence happens to me a lot, but it's not actually a coincidence because I always have my antennas on everywhere I go. You never know when inspiration or an opportunity is gonna come up, right? And that is the definition of my favorite word, serendipity. The discovery by accident and sagacity of something you were not in search of. It is a coincidence, kind of, but also I was actively looking for opportunities, researching the artists, you know, so it's chance, but really not only. It's kind of a sport, it's a hobby of mine. Conclusion, <laughs> in a nutshell, I got a Sphinx by Finney because my design course got canceled. <laughs> Take care, see you soon in a new video. Bye.